Hi, welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is Into the Weekend with Bet DSI, the call we do every Thursday with Brent, the headlines manager of DSI Sportsbook. Today is January 31st, so we are looking ahead to Super Bowl 47 coming up this Sunday, and there's also a UFC event. We're going to find out what kind of action Brent has taken on the Super Bowl side, the total, and props. Brent, thanks for being with us once again. Thanks for having me on, Peter. All right, Super Bowl 47. The line has not budged since uh, since our last call when it settled after the early movement to uh, three and a half and 47. What kind of action have you seen uh, this past week since our last call? Yeah, we've seen steady action, but I mean, in terms of the the, the count and the dollar volume, everything is is pretty much exactly the same as what we talked about last mm -hmm. week. There's been absolutely no change, and that's reflected in line still being three and a half and forty seven. Um, at the time we, when we spoke last week, the count was still in favor of Baltimore slightly. The money was slightly in favor of Baltimore. That hasn't changed, and the over the count and money was slightly slightly over the forty seven, and that hasn't changed either. So it's, I mean, we've got decent volume, steady volume, but nothing you know nothing dramatic to make us move a number. Okay, and have you gotten any notable sharp action in this past week since the last time we spoke? Honestly, nothing, nothing yet. I mean, we talked about last week. We had a, a sharp guy who laid uh, San Francisco minus one seventy-five. You, you, a little bit of sharp money on Baltimore plus the four. So you kind of you stuck in the middle of a rock and a hard place there in terms right. of wanting to, you know, you want to lay the one seventy-five and take the four. Well, you probably want to do both of those things. So, I mean, looking at, at sharp action, you kind of got to pick a side if you wanted to follow one. But at, at this point, you know, we're still still a ways out before the kickoff, of course. And, and and right now, we haven't had anything new in the last week. Okay, and what kind of action do you anticipate between now and the Super Bowl in terms of both public and sharp? Well, the, the bulk of it in terms of, of public and money is probably going to come in on Sunday. And people are just mm -hmm. me, you know. I, I think you know a lot of people want to save their money for the weekend. A lot, a lot of college basketball, a lot of things going on on Saturday. I mean, even hockey is a big night on Saturday, so there's a lot going on. We talked about UFC, so there's a lot of reasons for people want to hold on to their money unless they think they're getting a real edge in terms of the line. And of course, with the, the number hasn't moved in so long. There's really no reason to bet now, but on on Sunday it's going to be crazy. Right. And do you have any reason to believe that uh, you won't be basically balanced uh, come Sunday? Monday? No, I I don't I don't think we have any reason to believe that at all. It looks like we're going to be in, in a good position here, Peter. We're going to ba basically be balanced and sit back, watch the game, and, and collect our juice. Hopefully, right. Well, there are some Super Bowls though where you are a bit unbalanced, and you definitely do have a need, right? Yeah, that absolutely does happen and has happened in the past. I mean, I think New England comes to mind where that was a tough decision. I can't remember which one of the games were, but the, I mean, generally a, a line like this, you, you, these teams, you know, they they seem very competitive, you know, and they, they should be, you're talking about the Super Bowl, and everything, but it's, it's kind of a game where there's a lot of kind of questions and doubts you can pose about either side, so the number seems really good, the total seems really good, and that's reflected in the betting action. Okay, and there, are, there have been Super Bowls in the past, correct me if I'm wrong, where there has been, uh, if not an absolute sharp public split, a pretty strong sharp public split, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely, that yeah. does happen. And that is not the case this year? This year, no, not at all. Are there any disaster scenarios that could happen that you would be afraid of? Well, in terms of teasers, I mean, of course, everyone's playing plays a whole lot of teasers. At least the public do. So, um, we've got a lot of teasers that involve Baltimore plus ten and a half, plus eleven. The teasers the other way are with San Francisco plus three, plus three and a half. So, I mean, the game falling in between those numbers wouldn't be good for us. Most of our action on the the total side in terms of teasers has been over forty and a half, over forty one. But of course, we do have under money, under fifty three and a half, fifty four, stuff like that. So, a blowout by their side, blowout on the total either way would be good for us. Right, but if both sides of both teasers land, uh, will that be a disaster or will it just mean you'll make a lot less? No, no, it, w it won't be a disaster. I mean, if, not, if, if nothing else, we, we stand to win. If there's, a, if there's a blowout or the total goes way, way over, we stand to do really well on the game. But other than that, no, the juice we make on the game would offset any of the teaser losses. Okay, and then let's start talking about props. Have you gotten a decent amount of action on props so far? We've gotten decent action on props so far, and, and most of what we see this early is, is pretty much sharp stuff. You don't get right. a lot of public guys playing the, playing the props right. at this point. Again, they'll all come in on Sunday, so the little bit of action we have taken on the props has been mostly sharp stuff. Okay, and th let us know. Let us know what it is so we can tail it. Well, you, you, here's how it works, Peter. You ask the question, I give the answer. <laughs> I can't volunteer all, volunteer okay. all this sharp okay. information. Okay, uh, my question is, what props can you tell us to bet so that we can make some free money? 
there's no such thing as free money. Everything involves risk. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I've seen this um, a lot of. I guess it's stuff tied to the under, if you want to call that, mm-hmm. or anything else. Again, we talked about these two teams having decent defenses, so I've got some sharp money on the total rushing yards combined by both teams. Uh, we have a prop of under or over 255 and a half. I've taken sharp money on the under of that one. Um, the the score in the first, you know, the first score of the game will it be. Uh, you know, in, in less than or more than 10 minutes, we've got the no score in the first 10 minutes at a plus 245. Sharps came in and took that or some really good plus money there. So we're mm. expecting kind of a, it'd take a while for either, either of these teams to find a groove. Um, I've also got sharp money actually on uh, one of the, the longest kickoff return, a special teams kind of prop. And you take a look at Baltimore with Jacoby Jones. Um, I guess that's kind of the motivation for the, these guys who come in and took Baltimore having the longest kickoff return. So that gives you an idea of the kind of action we see in terms of sharp stuff, what guys are going for. How about uh, any of the basic, uh, you know, marquee player, player props, like, you know, yards, completions for any of the, even though yeah. it's Flacco, Kaepernick? No, I haven't seen much of that at all so far, Peter. Most of it has been related to the game. Um, right. Another one where, where Sharps came in were the longest field, field goal in the game. Now, that's the thing where we had it at, at the time, the price was San Francisco scores the longest field goal plus 135. Now, I guess that's, you know, public perception of uh, the San Francisco kickers not being as good, so people were betting the Baltimore side, but the Sharps came in and took San Francisco. And again, that I think people read too much into that being a prop based on the kicker's ability as opposed to field position. Right. But that's a kind of but that really, that's, that should be probably a 50-50 proposition. But we, because of the money we took, we had to jack the line on, on, on Baltimore having the longest field goal just because of the perception that the San Francisco kickers aren't as good. Hmm. That's very interesting. And what about, like, the defensive props, like, you know, things like sacks, the sack props, and the interception props? I know that a lot of the sharps that I speak to who are professional prop bettors tend to be attracted to those kind of props in the Super Bowl. Have you gotten any notable sharp action on, say, like, you know, the over-under on sacks? At this point, no. I mean, again, most of the stuff I've had is tied to unders, like um, first downs, under for both teams, things of that mm-hmm. that nature. And again, like, will a, will there be a score in the first 10 minutes? Then no, that stuff. Just kind of where they perceive value. And again, maybe it's the case of them seeing the game kind of being being a slow-paced game and liking the total. But uh, no, so far, like in terms of the player props and things like the, those kind of pulls, I haven't seen any sharp action on that stuff. In terms of live betting, I mean, you offer live betting for UFC events. Why don't you just li- offer live betting for the Super Bowl? You're going to do that? Yeah, we actually, every night, you know, even during, you know, Monday through Friday, we offer live betting on, on the, we, we select college basketball games. Every now and then we'll do a hockey game, NBA games and stuff like that, especially like the TNT doubleheaders, ESPN games, stuff like that. So we do get a lot of betting, uh, live betting uh, on all events all week long. So, of course, the Super Bowl is just going to be crazy in terms of the amount of product we're going to be offering live in-game betting there. It's going to be stuff like the next play on the next down, the first team to X number of points, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's going to be on our, our live wagering. And also after every quarter, we're going to have a new line for just the, the following quarter. So at the end of the first quarter, we'll have a line on the second quarter, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be, it's going to be a crazy game. And, and you know, people just try and, you know, want, are interested in betting on anything. If a guy, you know, lost the team to score first, well, he might be looking to bet the next quarter and stuff like that. So anything that anyone going to want to bet, uh, bet on, we're going to be offering on Sunday for sure. That's amazing and awesome. It also strikes me as a little bit risky. I mean, what if you get, you know, I mean, this is the Super Bowl. This is not, you know, some, you know, college basketball game where you can assume there's not going to be a ton of people watching. I mean, there's, you know, there's going to be 100 million people watching this game. Isn't it possible that you could get inundated with, like, live betting action that you can't control? Well, it wouldn't be a case where we can't control. We've got a, a team of like four or five guys in that room who do live betting, and so they'll they'll have everything under control. I mean, you got to remember too, the sports world kind of stops when the Super Bowl's on, so they're all going to be dedicated just to this one game. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for all this great information once again, Brent, and we will talk to you next week after the Super Bowl.